Hi, it's Kathy, and I'm back with another edition of Tip It On Tuesday. Today, I'm going to show you how to use your dies or the pieces of paper that you uh, um, cut with your dies and make them into masks for a different look. So this is the car that we're going to make today, and I have some tips for you on it. And here's the inside of the card. So let's get started. I'll be using the Swirly Bird stamp set and the Coordinating Swirly Scribbles uh, dies and also the Birthday Banners stamp set. And I'm using this Happy Birthday and the It's Your Big Day. For your cardstock, you'll need a piece of real red that is eight and a half by five and a half for your card. I have a piece that is four by five and a quarter of the new in color uh, black, no, I'm sorry. See, I'm just learning. Um, blueberry bushel, and I think it's just a really pretty blue. And then you will need a piece of Whisper White, that same size, four by five and a quarter for inside your card. And on the front of your card, you'll need a Whisper White that measures three and three quarters by five. You'll need a piece of the window sheets that measures three inches by three inches. You'll need a piece of real red that measures seven eighths of an inch by three and three quarters inches and a piece of whisper white that measures three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters inches. You'll need to cut uh, the porthole out of the Wood Textures uh, Designer Series paper, which is actually the first time I've ever seen them carry over a paper, and I am thrilled that they are carrying this one over. And what I used was the layering circles, and the inside one is the one and seven eighths inch circle, and the outside is the two and five eighths inch circle. You're going to need a scrap piece of paper in order to uh, stamp and then cut out the boat. And I'll go ahead and show you how um, I stamped that and some recommendations I have on stamping that. I have two little pieces, maybe an inch and a half long, of the blueberry bushel 1 8 inch gross grain ribbon and then two little pieces, about one and a half inches, of the real red 1 8 inch ribbon. And then you will need uh, some faceted gems, one large one and two of the smaller ones. And then you will need approximately seven of the rhinestones. And this will be dependent upon how close you put them on your um, the front of your card. Now for the shaker contents, you can use whatever you have. Um, I just happen to have some beads that um, I thought would be pretty in there. So that's what I'm going to do for this card. So let's get started. The first thing I did was cut this uh, piece using the uh, the dies and I just cut it out of scrap paper and I actually cut a couple of them and that way I can do a little bit more of the sponging at the same time. So what we'll do, I'm going to bring in something to work on and we're going to take that three and three quarter inch by five inch whisper white piece and I'm just going to lay these down and just set them down on the card and just get them at an angle where they kind of look good. I'll get my blueberry bushel ink and our sponge brayer and I'm just going to pick up some of the ink and just start to roll back and forth.
And all you have to do is be careful to stay up in these two. And if they get pushed out of the way, just bring them back in line. And so I'm not going too close to the bottom here yet. Then I'll take this one and bring it down and put it where I want it down here like this. And then work my way down. And switch this one around again like that. There we go. Okay, so there's that piece. Now for the inside, I need to do the same thing for just the bottom. Let me just show you again on the inside of the card. See here, so what I wanna do is uh, take a piece of post-it note, and I have some of the really wide ones, and that works out perfectly, and I'm going to place that um, this way, just like that, and then this here, and that will allow me to get that nice straight line, horizon line, I guess is what you would want to call that, on the inside of the card. And there we go. Okay. So now that we have the that done, while we've got our ink out, let's go ahead and stamp our sentiment here. So on the outside, I'll be doing happy birthday. that had a little string attached. So let's flip it over and let's see if we can find where that was. Try again. There we go. And then on the inside of the card in real red, I'll be doing the It's Your Day. And you could do this at the end if you wanted to um, just to make sure that you have it where you want it once you've got everything else done. But I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. So let's bring in our scrap piece and go ahead and stamp our boat. So at the, the uh, base of the boat I'm going to do in the blueberry bushel. And then I want the, um, the large mainsail to also be in the blueberry bushel. So I'm going to take the striped piece and stamp that. Now what I do is I line up this little point, this corner of this, the um, sail, kind of with the back of the boat. And just up a ways. And that's where I stamp it. Just like that. And then I'm going to come back and do the solid portion, but I'm going to stamp off once first. And I like doing the stripe before the solid. Um, it seems to be easier for me to line things up that way. So let's see if I can get that on there. Just like that. And then with the crumb cake ink, I'm going to stamp the... Uh, I guess this would be the jib sail, right? My husband will be proud. I actually know the names of the sails. Okay, and then finally, our little flag is going to be done in red. And what I'm going to do before I stamp that is bring in a ruler and my uh, black marker. And I'm going to turn it upside down um, and then line up along the straight line with that sail but in that white gap and I'm going to draw a line 
for the mast. And I'm going to put it just like that. And then I'm going to move over just a tad bit to the right because I want a little bit thicker mast than that line will give me. So there we go. There's my mast. Now I can turn it around, back around and in real red put my little flag on top. Just like that. And then we'll cut that out. And as I showed you before, I already had one cut out. So we'll use that. Okay, so now I need to cut my porthole for the shaker card here in this piece. So again, I will be using the one and seven eighths inch uh, circle die for that. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm back and I have my uh, circle cut. And now I'm going to um, use my adhesive and attach the window sheet on the back side here. Just like that. And then I'm going to take one of the adhesive strips And I'm going to start here at the top and just kind of go around in a circle real close to the edge of that circle. One time I uh, left the opening at the bottom and, it, and uh, it was some glitter and things and it just kept coming out. So that's why I always put it at, at the top now. And then I also kind of push it together and get my scissors and try and get them so that they can meet up perfectly. Just like that. Okay. So then with the leftover of that strip, I'm going to make a couple of pieces, cuts, and place them on the outside edges. I find that they're a little bit different height than our dimensionals, so I tend to use those, and, and I'll use these end pieces as well. So we'll use some of the end this time. It's got all kinds of little hairs all over it. Okay, just, whoop, that way. Okay, we'll take the blueberry bushel piece and I'm just going to pour a little bit of these beads right into the top center here, like that. And remove the adhesive here. Place that down just like that. And then I can pull off these outside edge pieces. I used to think that shaker cards were so hard, but once we got these adhesive strips, it made them so much easier to make. Okay. There we go. All right, so now we can place our um, porthole on, and I'm going to go ahead and just use liquid glue for that. Now, if you've seen the new catalog, you probably have discovered that for the rhinestones they um, are offering red ones now um, but I don't have them yet so what I'm going to use is I'm going to take my blends marker and I'm going to go ahead and color them and then I'll set them to the side and let them dry for a little bit. So that way I can get red ones and the nice thing is I can get whatever color 
I want as long as it's one of the colors I have a blends marker in. So there we go. All right. So we'll take our happy birthday and place it onto the red strip. like that. And then I'm going to take a small piece of tear and tape, or actually two of them, just about like that, about one and a half inches. And I'm going to wrap them here on the happy birthday. And take my little ribbon pieces and place them on the back and then come around and wrap them. Okay, and then we can take that piece and place it down onto the front of our card. this and then place our card on the card front so then we'll take some dimensionals and Attach my boat. Right there. And then we'll take our rhinestones. And I started it here just past the boat and started placing them about a half inch or so, maybe three quarters of an inch gap. So you can just keep placing those around. turned out about right. Okay. The two small faceted gems go on the front here. And then we'll work on the inside of the card. Come back with this and in my description, I forgot to give you also, you'll need a piece of this uh, blueberry bushel uh, eighth inch rib, gross grain ribbon. Um, probably a piece about five inches or so. And we're just going to uh, secure that on the back. Let me get this paper out of here so that I can set it down because no stick. And wrap that around on either side. Let's right, come down a bit. Okay, and then we need to stamp uh, another boat on the inside of the card. So we'll do that real quick. 
So again, start with the base. And then finally, the large faceted gem is down here in the corner. And this can be attached to the inside of your card. And there is your um, swirly bird boat card using the masking technique. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you come back and check out next week's Tippin' on Tuesday. Or visit my blog at inkingitupwithkathy.com. Have a great week.